John's Gospel, chapter 10, and verse 9, the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are his words. He says, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Just the first part of that verse that I want to draw your attention to. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. And that's all we wish to read and we trust with the blessing of God. I would judge that there was never a, a, a preacher like the Lord Jesus Christ. No, no one ever that heard his words went away in confusion. And everyone that heard his words, they were words that were spoken in simplicity, that even the youngest that, that were there at that time could have understand his words. And I hope tonight, friend, that his words uh, tonight, as we seek to speak them again to you and your hearing, that even from the very youngest to the oldest tonight, that if you're not saved, that you might take something away with you of the simplicity of God's plan of salvation. Listen again to the words of the Savior. He said, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. These were the words that were spoken by the Lord Jesus on that occasion so long ago to the people, and people that had many ideas of their own and wondering just how it was that things were going to work out. But as the Saviour, as he spoke to them, the words that he spoke were words that were very simple, words that were very clear, and words that were pointed. And tonight, friend, we would love you to just to stop and consider on the pathway of life if you're not saved, and to consider what the Saviour would say to you. We live on a day, and it seems to be an amazement to me at times as we meet people along the pathway of life, and as we speak to them, and maybe things turn to spiritual matters, and we ask them, how is it for eternity, and how is it, do they, do they know that all is well for the world to come? Many, they come with their own ideas and their own hopes, their ambitions, for how it is that they're going to be in heaven at the end of life's journey. I'm surprised at times as I think about people as they enter into their place of business. They know the regulations and the rules that are there, how it is that they must dress, how it is that they must conduct themselves. We think of even those that maybe have been privileged to even to meet the king or the queen in a day that has passed. Each and every one they were instructed how it is they should dress, how it is they should they should conduct themselves in, in, the, in the presence of, of the sovereign of the land. And yet whenever it comes to the fact of a soul leaving time for eternity, and of a soul stepping into heaven, it seems to be that in the ideas of men that anything will go today. Live as you like, die as you please, but be sure of this when life is over, that I will be in heaven. I want to tell you, friend, tonight that that is contrary to the word of God. These were the words that were spoken by the Savior, and these were words that were very emphatic, words that were plain and solid that you could rest upon, and not one to again say against them. For he himself did say, he says, I am the door, by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Maybe tonight you say to yourself, how is it that this man that you seek to present, how is it that he can make such a claim that he alone has the way to heaven? I want to remind you, soul, tonight that not only, as he said in, in clear and simple terms, that he is the only way, that Christ tonight, my friend, for you is not an option. He's not an alternative in the pathway of life. But if ever a soul wants to be in heaven, they must come through Christ, the open door. And he himself could say that, I am the door, he says, by me. And what I want you to grasp tonight, friend, is this, if you've never thought about it before, that if ever a soul like you or I is going to be in heaven, we're going to have to come to Christ for salvation. For it is he and he alone that can offer salvation to the whosoever. There's not another on the scene of life or on the pathway of life that has ever suffered for sin. Not another who could have, who'd have, who could have taken the load of guilt up as mine and have taken it from me and left me in a, left me in a condition where I was fit for heaven. But yet tonight, my friend, there was one, and he by his own sacrifice upon the cross, that one who offered himself without spot unto God, that one who was holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, that one in whom there is no sin, that there alone upon the cross God meet to lay upon him the iniquity of us all, and all the sin that was, due, that was yours, and all the sin that was mine, yea, all the sin that was the world's, he alone, he bore it upon the cross, said John the Baptist, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And outside those city gates of Jerusalem, alone for those hours upon the cross, God meet to lay upon him the iniquity of us all. There's not a man on the scene of time that could ever give to God a ransom for the soul. No man who could by any means redeem his brother. That is simply just to pay the price that God demanded to, to buy back his brother from, from the slave market of sin. But there was one, and by the shedding of his own most precious blood, he alone upon the cross, he met the claims of God. He, on him almighty vengeance fell that would have sunk a world to hell. He bore it for a ruined race and thus became my hiding place. And yet tonight, friend, that one who suffered upon the cross, he and he alone can say, I am the door 
by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. The first thing tonight, friend, I want you to notice from this verse is these are the words of the Savior. It's just where you stand in relation to this door, this door who is Christ. You see, soul, tonight, whenever I read this verse, I discover the, the, I discover the truth that is this, that you and I, whenever we start at life, that each and every one of us, without exception, we're outside the door. That's something very simple tonight. You can see it from the verse. If any man enter in, if ever I'm going to enter through a door, it means I'm on the outside. I wonder, soul, tonight, if you grasp that. Have you ever discovered in life that I'm outside, outside the door because of my sin, the, the condition in which I'm born, that I'm outside the door and I'm exposed to the wrath and the judgment of God? You remember that day back in Genesis chapter 3, and if you're not familiar with it and you're spared tonight to go home, you take it down and read your Bible. The day that sin entered into the world, it brought, it brought man into, uh, uh, because of his disobedience, it brought man into a position where God drove man out of the garden. And man was placed on the outside at a distance from God. That's just where you find yourself tonight, soul. You're not someone who's working day by day, doing the best that you can, getting that little bit closer to God. I know, my friend, you and I, because of sin, we're at a distance from God. And says the word of God again, it says there is no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It's not a matter of you or I having missed the mark or the standard of God by just a little. The fact is this, friend, that because of sin, you and I have missed the mark completely. Not one of us by our own efforts or by our own works could ever attain to the standard that God has given. Not one of us by our own efforts could ever fit ourselves for heaven. Because each and every one of us were marked by sin. It has brought us down. It has put us at a distance from God. It has put us on a pathway that has taken us down to a lost eternity. And that friend tonight is just where you stand in relation to the door. You're outside the door. And it's because of your sin. The good thing tonight, friend, just to get a grasp of that. That before God tonight, just as I stand, matters not what my neighbours, my family might think about me. As God looks down from heaven upon me, that God says that I am a sinner, and I'm outside the door. Listen again to the words of the verse. These are the words of the Savior. He says, I am the door. He says, by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. You know, friend, that's just the next thing I want you to draw your, draw your attention to. Just as the Savior, as he spoke these words, just the fact of provision that has been made for all, a possibility tonight, my friend, whereby you can be saved. You know, this is something that never ceases to amaze me whenever we come to a gospel meeting just like this. To think tonight of a God in heaven who so loved the world. A God in heaven tonight who has been so outraged by sin. And yet God has chosen to set his love upon us. And God has chosen to provide salvation for all. Ah yes, we've already quoted the words in prayer. That God our Savior who will of all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. I'm glad, soul, tonight that I don't have to come and worry about who I'm speaking to. I don't have to worry about who I meet in the street and to bring them the word of God. Because I'm glad tonight, friend, that God is interested in each and every one. Not one soul tonight under the sound of my voice. Not one soul even in the scope of this world in which we live. Each and every one is a, is a, is a candidate for divine blessing. And each and every one can enter in through Christ the open door. I tell you, soul, tonight it's a wonder that God ever sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I tell you, friend, tonight that there's a possibility of salvation for each and every one tonight that are under the sound of my voice, each and every one that is out of Christ. God has provided salvation for you, but I want to ask you, friend, tonight, what are you going to do with this provision that God has made for you, whereby you can be saved? Ah, yes, each and every one because of our sin we're, we're outside the door. Each and every one of us because of the death of Christ we can, we can come through Christ the open door and know our sins were given. But so tonight this, this door that is standing open, this door that God has opened that whereby man can be blessed and man can be saved, this door is open. But so tonight I want you to understand it's not God that's, it's not God that's going to force you to enter in. It's not your neighbor that's going to make you or your friend that's going to make you enter in through Christ the open door. If ever tonight, my friend, you're going to be saved, you will have to make up your mind that I am going to enter in. I trust all tonight that you'll just get a, just get a, get a hold of that. The responsibility, if ever I'm going to be saved, that rests four square upon my shoulders. And if ever I'm going to be saved and to know the joy of sins forgiven, it's up to me and to me alone if ever I'm going to be saved. God tonight will not force you to enter into heaven. God tonight, as it were, will not put your arm up behind your back and force you in and through Christ the open door in order that you may be saved. Ah, oh, no, friend, not a bit. 
If ever you're going to be saved tonight, you'll have to make up your mind that your sin that you find so much enjoyment in, your sin that you find your pleasure in, that you're going to have to turn your back upon it. You're going to have to put it to the one side and you're going to have to come to Christ for salvation. That was just the experience that was mine as a boy of 13 years of age. I remember the day when burdened about my sin and I knew that all was not well for the world to come. Many, many days had passed and I was sure that maybe somehow, some way that God would owe me something and somehow that I would get saved. But the moment came when just in the pathway of life when I discovered for the first time I was a sinner. I was going down to a lost eternity. And I knew that that was just what I deserved. That was, that was the moment, as it were, that broke me. Just to consider that hell was my portion, and that's exactly what I deserved. But there came the moment when I was willing to turn from my sin, when I rested my all upon Christ, and I came into the joy of sins forgiven. And I knew that all was well for the world to come. I wonder, soul, tonight, what is it that's keeping you back from entering into salvation? What is it tonight that's stopping you from resting your all upon Christ and to know that all is well for the world to come? We turn back into the, the word of God, we learn of a man called Esau. And it tells us concerning him that for a pottage, uh, <clears throat> just, just for as it were, for a, a bowl of soup, as it were, just a meal, that man he sold his birthright. And though he wept bitterly some time afterwards uh, with, with tears, there was found no place of repentance for him. Maybe you could think tonight of a Judas who he sold the Lord for 30 pieces of silver. Just the value of money that was all that was important to him. And yet he sold his soul, he lost his way. And he's, tonight he's, he's in the coast as the poet has penned it, of the castaway. What is it tonight, friend, that's stopping you from going in for salvation? What is it tonight that you see is more important than the pathway of life? What is it tonight that you deem so important that it's worth losing your soul over? Oh, tonight, friend, that there might be one, that you might be willing to turn, that you might be willing to leave those things that you cling to and hold on to, and tonight to cast it to the one side and to come to Christ and to acknowledge just before him that what I am is a sinner and that where I'm going is what I deserve and that even tonight that you might cry out for salvation and to enter in through Christ the open door. You know, the next thing I want you to notice from this verse, from what, what, the, what the Lord Jesus was saying, he said, I am the door. He says, by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. You know, here's the next big thing that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great comfort to every soul that's saved. These were the words of the Savior. He says, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Here's a guarantee tonight, friend, that you can rest upon. I've spoken to men in days that are past and they've told us about guarantees that they've had and when the moment came and the thing went wrong and they went to make their claim and to get the thing put right, you know, they discovered either the firm was, was, was bust or maybe just the, 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 the small writing as they talk about, it just wasn't enough to, to, to meet their need and their, their, their claim was left to the one side. The guarantee was worth nothing. But here's a guarantee tonight, friend, that stands as true today as the time when, when the Savior spoke it. A guarantee tonight that comes from the God who cannot lie. He says, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Listen to the words of John 3 and 16, that beautiful text at times that we love to, that we love to read and quote. It tells us there that for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And these are the words of God. He says, whosoever believeth in him, that is Christ, just to rest your all upon him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. There's something tonight, soul, that you can rest upon for eternity. There's something tonight that you can take away with you tonight if you're willing to turn from your sin. No man on earth can take it from you. God himself has promised it. It will last not only throughout the ages of life, It'll last for the ever, never-ending ages of eternity. And it comes tonight from the God who cannot lie. And these are his words. He says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. The last thing, friend, I want you to just to consider for just a moment is just the reality that this door, that just now, it stands open. And God says the time to be saved, it's now. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. But I just want you to consider for a moment that the possibility that this door will close. It's not a case of it might close or maybe we're not sure, but this door will definitely close. Not one of us here tonight, we, we know the time. Not one of us knows the hour. But you know, the Lord himself, he himself has spoken of a day when that, when that door will close. There was a man who came to the Lord Jesus one day. You'll read about him in Luke's Gospel, chapter 13. And he came to the Lord and he says to the Lord, he says, Lord, are there few that be saved? And the man on that occasion, he was taken up with the number that was going to be in heaven. 
But the Lord, he just, he just turned the thing and he told him in words like these. He says, strive to enter in at the straight gate. And he went on to say concerning the master of the house, the moment will come when he is risen and shut to the door. You know, friend, tonight it matters not how many is going to be in heaven. The big thing is this. You make sure you're there. But someday this door will close. And it will either close, my friend, whenever life for you runs out and you enter out into eternity. Or it's going to close when the Lord himself will come from heaven and the shout will be given. And for you that have known the story so well, and you that have known the way of salvation, and you that have known how it is that a soul can enter into the joy of sins forgiven, that moment when he comes, this door will close. Salvation for you, opportunity, is gone forever. I trust, friend, tonight that that may bear in upon you, because time is not on your side. And tonight, my friend, these things are for real, and they're for eternity. And the big thing is this, friend, it's where you will be when time is no more. I leave the words with you, and with this I close. These were the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. You turn with me, please, to the book of Samuel. I have three readings tonight, and the first is found in 1 Samuel, and chapter 3. First Samuel chapter 3 and verse 1. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. The word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. Over to Psalm, Psalm 49. Psalm 49 and verse 6. They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. None of them can by any means redeem his brother or give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their soul is precious and it ceaseth forever that he should still live forever and not see corruption. As verse 8, the redemption of their soul is precious and it ceaseth forever. And finally, in 1 Peter, 1 Peter for a well-known uh, a verse or two here in chapter 1. Verse 18, For as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. And that'll do for a reading with what we have listened to. Our brother Ross has set out a very clear gospel message, words of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the door. But tonight, as I th was thinking about Bally Clare, Many things are through your mind. And I just started to think about something, some things that were precious. And we have read about three things tonight, and I don't even like to call them things. But three things tonight that are precious and that they will never, ever lose their value. You might think, well, everything loses its value. Gold, equally loses its value. Silver, 
Oi! Land! Pro- they all lose their value. Well, we have read about three things tonight, and they'll never lose their value. As the precious scriptures, the word of the Lord was precious in those days. Isaiah tells us, the grass wellereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God endureth forever. The word of God will never lose its value. The Bible doesn't contain the word of God. The Bible is the word of God. It's living and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joint and marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. There's power in the word of God and it'll never lose its value. Something else will not lose its value. And that's your precious soul. No wonder the Lord Jesus Christ, as he looked over Jerusalem, he wept. I actually mean he wailed. Precious souls that was gone out into eternity. He called them. He pleaded with them. He prayed for them. He likened himself to a, a mother hen. How oft would I gather thee as a hen doth gather her brood under her wing, and ye would not. Your soul will never lose its value. We are all eternal beings. And finally, and Peter, Peter tells us about many precious things, precious, precious promises, and precious stones, and precious faith. But he told us about the precious blood of Christ. Not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot, the blood of Christ will never lose its value. What was shed 2,000 years ago at dark Calvary is still the cleansing power to save you tonight in Ballyclare. And I trust and pray there's some boy, girl, man, woman gathered here this evening, 8th of October 2023, how can I be saved? How can I be sure of heaven? How can I get rid of my sin? Well, Ross has told you very clearly. The Lord Jesus says, like himself to a door, he says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. I was chatting to a lady one day, she's not well. And I always like to go back to the time of conversion. And I said, tell me, how do you get saved? She was attending meetings. And she said it was that verse in John chapter 6. Him that cometh unto me, I will on no wise cast out. And you can be saved tonight. That's the good news for you. You who are not saved, you can be saved tonight if you had just come. Come as you are. A guilty, lost, condemned sinners. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Not good people. Not religious people. Not colored people. White people. He came to save sinners. And not unless you're willing just to come as a sinner. And all your need. And put your trust in him. Jesus, I will trust thee. Trust thee with my soul. I'm guilty. And I'm lost and I'm helpless. Thou canst make me whole. There is none on heaven or on earth like thee. Thou hast died for sinners. Therefore, Lord, for me. I never forget the night I got saved. 21st of February, 1985. 13 people in the home that night. Not one of them knew I was anxious to be saved. There was a preacher had arrived a few days earlier. And it was the preacher of death. He's the loudest preacher. 
And we have it in every town and village, graveyards all around us. That's the loudest preacher. And I realized I was going down and going out without any hope. I wasn't saved. Oh, yes, privileged. Oh, yes, prayed for. Oh, yes, preached to. I wasn't saved. And as I was any age, I always wanted to be saved. Some of my brothers were different. I always wanted to be saved. I remember looking into the birds in the sky and thinking, I wish it was a bird. When I die, that will be the end. But I had a living soul that will never cease to be. The grave digger will never bury it. Water will never drown it. Fire will never burn it. I'm eternal and I'm not right with God. And I started to read a gospel track that's called Thoughts on Calvary. And our late brother Dave McMullen from Cambridge Avenue Assembly gave it to me one night going out of a meeting in Ballywatermoy. Dave did a lot of work around our farmyard, ACC. And uh, he had a good interest in, in young people. And they gave me this track and I started to read it. And it's all about Calvary. And if you want to be saved tonight, you must get to the cross. The way to the cross leads home. No one goes to heaven without getting to the cross. You need to get to the Savior. And this track it led me to the Savior. And there's a little verse on it that says, Now every jot and tittle's done, tis finished Jesus Christ. His spirit up to God he yields. He bows his head, he dies. And that night, I realized he died for me. And a chorus of a hymn came into my mind. Only a sinner saved by grace. And I said, I'm saved. Man, I long for the day to be saved. My fortune was made for eternity. I left school at 16. I haven't got, even got a dot after my name. And I'm not ashamed of that. But I'm going to go and stand before the king in all his beauty. And I'm going to be in heaven forever. My name is in the book of life. Heaven is my home. Eternally. Nothing can equal it. What can equal joy divine? What can sweeter be? Knowing that the soul is saved. And saved for God's endless eternity. Three things that will never lose its value. The precious word of God. The scriptures. We have reached to a very dark day in the time scale of Israel. The people that God called out of Egypt, the people that God cared for, and the people that God loved, you know, they just demonstrated the heart of man. They got away from God. And they've got into a very dark, dark day. This is about 1150 years before the Lord Jesus Christ was born. And uh, as good that there's praying women. And I'm not sure. I'm sure there's praying sisters here tonight. We keep praying whatever you're praying for. Because there's a woman in the Bible and her name is Hannah. And you know, she didn't even pray out loud as only her lips moved. And she was praying that God would give her her man child that would be, a, what would live a life for God. And Samuel was born. And Samuel was a real godly man. And he prayed for the children of Israel. And he wept for the children of Israel. And you know, he was a real turning point for the children of Israel because he was a forerunner of, the, of King David. But they've reached a real dark stage. And it says, the word of the Lord was precious. And those days, the days were dark. And that's just like the days we're in here now. The word of the Lord is precious. You know why it's precious? It just tells us exactly who we are, where we are, and where we're going. Do you ever go to a forest park with a family and you go to the, the big billboard and uh, you see a big blob there that says, you are here. And you see all the wee paths where they all lead to. Well, I'm glad for the word of God because you know the word of God tells us who we are and where we're going and where we deserve to be. 
We would be lost without the Bible. We wouldn't even know anything about the sun or the moon or the seasons of the year. Hospitals are presents. But God has left us a no doubt. The word of the Lord is precious and it tells us whether we like it or not, we're in a broad way that leadeth to destruction because of sin. That's the way in which we're born. Eight billion souls in the world, and we've all been born on the broad way that leadeth to destruction. Paul, writing to Romans, tells us, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Isaiah the prophet tells us, all we like sheep have gone astray. We're just like sheep that's gone astray. When did this happen? Our forefathers had sinned against God. Adam, and who is put out of the presence of God. And you know, when Adam sinned, you sinned. I sinned. Everyone sinned. We all were in Adam the day he sinned. And there's not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. And as God looks down from heaven, he sees that we're unclean and unfit for God's presence because of sin. And I thank God for the word of God. The word of the Lord was precious in those days. And you know, we put much emphasis on the word of God. There's many libraries in the world and, and real good authors, but there's nothing to be compared with the word of God. David said, thy word is a lump unto my feet and a light unto my path. You know why he said that? Because we're in the dark. And if you're not seared, you're in the dark, you're in danger. And if you die the way you're born, you'll end in this broad way that lands in destruction. And there's no coming back. Luke tells us, actually the words of the Lord Jesus Christ in Luke's Gospel, chapter 16, about two men that lived in this world. And two men that died. And two men that are in eternity. And the reality, one of them we read, he's lost. It says in hell, he lifted up his eyes being in torments. Lazarus was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. There's life after death. That's why we're here tonight to tell you something about the love and the grace and the mercy of God. The grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. But let's think the word of the Lord was precious in those days. The precious scriptures will never lose their value. Never read in Psalm 49, the redemption of the soul is precious. It says, no man can by any means redeem his brother or give to God a ransom for them. For the redemption of the soul is precious. You know what that word precious means? It means it's costly. Redemption is to deliver by paying a price. And not only this book tells us where we are, who we are, and where we're going, but it tells us something about redemption. Man, we love to think about redemption, especially in the Lord's Day morning when we gather to remember the saints. We just think, we always go back to the children of Israel, the night when they were redeemed out of Israel. And it was only it was only those that had the blood applied on the two side posts in the upper lintel. The Lord said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. There's men praying in this back room. Names has been mentioned. And I know mummies and daddies would love just to save their son. Mummies and daddies would love just to save their daughter. But they can't. Do you know why? The redemption of the soul is precious. No one else can do it. We are shut up to God's mercy. And I'm glad 
of this text and of all down here. Listen. For God so loved the world, he had no need to love it. He gave Adam all he needed. I'm glad he's a God of love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It was only God that could plan this redemption. He had only one son, his well-beloved son, holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, did no sin, in him is no sin, knew no sin, and he was the only one that can go to the cross and shed his precious blood and provide redemption for mankind. That's why it's precious. The redemption of the soul is precious because it was only God's Son that can do it. He that spared not his own Son, but delivered him up for us all. But God commendeth his love toward us and that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. Oh, friend, I trust this will seep into your heart and soul that you will never, ever cease to be. Good works will not save you. Good works will not save you. Coming to the gospel hall will not save you. Living a good life will not save you. Giving money to charity will not save you. How can I be saved? Faith in Christ. Look unto me, be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there's none else. Peter preached Acts 4 and 12, neither is there salvation in any other. For there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The only one that can save you is God. And he wants you to turn on the broad way tonight to stop and to give your soul a chance. Have you ever stopped to wonder what this life is all about? Why I'm here, where I'm going, when my little time runs out? Maybe I've been far too busy trying hard to reach my goal. Would you let me ask one question? Have you thought about your soul? I got a message this week of a man that has passed away and I just looked at his photograph. And I just text back to the brother that sent me it. I said, where is he? You know, when the boats leave Larn, they, de they depart and they arrive in the other side. When the planes leave the city airport, you see them going, they depart and they arrive. But you know, when we close our eyes in death, we arrive. It's not one hour or two hours or a week. It's immediately. It's a real thing. God breathed into man's nostrils a breath of life and man became a living soul. The redemption of the soul is precious and there's only one that can deliver you. Let's take you to the precious blood of Christ. The precious scriptures able to make wise unto salvation. Your precious soul. Peter tells us we're not redeemed with corruptible things of silver and gold. But he said we're redeemed with the precious blood of Christ. There's only one thing that can take away your sin, and that's the precious blood of Christ. You know there's criminals running at large in this world and in prison, and they would just love to have their, their crime cleared 
to get the all clear. I'm free. And that will only be for time. We can point you to the precious blood of Christ that will cleanse you not only for time, but for eternity. As it was my turn out this morning, we've got a wee boy, and we take turns. And Lord's Day, it was my turn out this morning. And as I partook of the, the cup this morning, there was one verse came before me. We have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. There's only one thing that would cleanse you from your sin, and that is the precious blood of Christ. You know, this is always the way back to God. Thank thee. We praise the Lord tonight. There is a way back to God from the dark paths of sin. Because, you see, when God put Adam out of the garden, that's the way we had to approach God, through a sacrifice. Now, the first family that came into the world was Cain and Abel. Cain, Cain brought the, the fruit of the land. He didn't acknowledge his need as a sinner. Abel did. Abel brought the first thing of, his, of the flock and the fat thereof. And I said God had respect unto Abel and his offering. But unto Cain and his offering, he had no respect because he didn't come God's way. And if you want to be saved and to be in heaven, everybody wants to be in heaven at the end of life's journey. I asked my wee Sunday school class this morning, do you all want to be in heaven? Oh, yes. Need a starting point. You can start tonight. You come to the, the cross at Calvary. Listen to Isaiah 53 and 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his strike we are healed. Peter tells us, who his own self bear our sins and his own body on the tree. You see, it was man that sinned. And God became man so he could die for man on the cross. Christ died for our sins. The debt has been cleared. The cry was heard, it is finished. If you're working to get to heaven, you're too late. The work is finished. God is satisfied. The Lord Jesus Christ, he has made a propitiation for our sins. You know what that means? He has satisfied God in totality. How do I really know? God raised him from the dead. And 40 days later, he ascended back into heaven. And he won't be allowed in there if there is one outstanding sin. He has satisfied God. Why can you not be satisfied? Don't let anything in this world put you past salvation. Mark 8 tells us, What shall a prophet a man if he shall gain the whole world? Lose his own soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? It's too late. It's too late. If you die without Christ. We're still in the day of grace. We have heard from Brother Ross, God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Heaven's door stands open wide. Well, how can I be saved? You can preach all day. And I heard just, just this morning about a girl attending meetings and uh, she wouldn't like to be saved. I know what she said. I just don't know how to do it. Well, you know, friend, if you got your eyes open, you're heading for the flames. You'll look for a savior. And I trust you'll get to the Calvary by the eye of faith. Wound it for me. Wound it for me. There on the cross, he was wounded for me. Gone my transgressions. Now I am free. 
all because Jesus was wounded for me. Sin must be punished. And God and love punished his son. And he is our substitute, our redeemer, our mediator. You come into the benefit of that tonight by putting your faith and trust in him. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. My sister Lois got saved. 1 Peter 3 and 18. Christ also has once suffered for sins. She read it again. Christ also has once suffered for sins. And she said, if Christ has suffered, I don't need to suffer. And she got saved in a moment of time. You can be saved tonight. Don't leave it too late. And meet me in heaven. Shall we pray? Our Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank thee for thy unerring, infatible, precious word of God. And thank thee, Father, for the, all these authors and for the words of the Lord Jesus Christ himself, which we have heard tonight. He said, I am the door. We pray, Father, for all gathered. We trust and pray, Father, this will be the night that their names will be written in the book of life. We pray, Father, they'll not rest nor sleep till they rest in the precious blood of Christ that cleanses from all our sin. Take us home safely, giving thanks for all thy blessings in our Savior's name. Amen.